Welcome to video one of the last minute foundation math revision. This part is on number. For each section, there'll be about five seconds where the questions come on without the answers. You can pause it and have a go if you wish, or you can just wait and watch the solutions. Okay, here goes part one. Rounding 4,259 to one significant figure. One, the first significant figure is the 4, so the 2 rounds down to 4,000. Estimating requires you to round to one significant figure. 18.2 rounds to 20, 5.1 rounds to 5, 0.523 rounds to 0.5. We rewrite the calculation. 20 times by 5 is 100. And 100 divided by 0 0.5 is 200. 35% of 240 with a calculator, we will just type in 35% times by 240. Or without a calculator, we will start by doing 10%, which is 24. 30% would be this times by 3. And 5% is half of the 10%. Adding together the 30% and the 5% will give me the answer of 84. Putting these in order, 1 quarter is 25%. 0 0.41 is 41%. 14% is already in a percent. This is the smallest. This is the second smallest, this is the largest. Which of the numbers is bigger? Well, two thirds is 66.6 .6 recurring percent. We should know that. If we don't know it, learn it please now. To make sure that it's clearly recurring, we put the dot on the six after the point. Three fifths, if you don't know what percent that is, we can turn it into a percentage out of 100. By doing that, we will make the denominator 100. I've times the bottom by 20, so I times the top by 20. So 3 fifths is equal to 60%. By getting them both as percentages, we can now compare them, and it's clear that this one is the biggest. Never just circle the, question, uh, the answer in an exam. Always make sure you write down your answer clearly. Okay, the final question, 63 as a percentage of 300. We'll start by writing that down as a fraction. 63 out of 300. What I need is I need that out of 100. So I'm going to have to rewrite it as a fraction out of 100. And I've done that by dividing by 3. 21 out of 100 helps me with the final answer which is 21%. Pause now if you want to have a go. And here are the answers. Turning them both into improper fractions by multiplying these numbers and adding the one on top, we get 11 over 3, add 11 over 5, and getting common denominators by timesing the first one by 5 and the second one by 3 gives me my answer of 88 over 15. If it wants it simplifying, 88 divided by 15 is 5. With a remainder of 13. Alternatively, I could have used a different method at this point to add the two fractions, such as the popular box and sausage method. Adding these numbers together would also give me the 88 over the 15. Number two. 2 thirds times 12, when you're multiplying, dividing, or anything else with fractions, make sure they're both fractions. 
In this case, I will put a 1 under the 12. Multiplying fractions requires me to multiply the tops and the bottoms. This one I can simplify as well because 24 divided by 3 is just 8. 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth, dividing fractions, requires me to keep, flip and change. Keep the first one the same, flip the second one over and change it to a times. Times the tops, times the bottoms. Again, if it wants it simplifying, 10 divided by 3 is 3 and a third. All the prime numbers, 11, not 12, 13, not 14 or 15 or 16, 17, not 18, 19. Cube root of 27 means what number times itself three times will give us 27. It would be 3 on each line. So my actual answer is 3. Rules of indices, when you are timesing, you can add the two indices together, which will give me 6. When you're dividing, you can subtract those powers, which also gives me 6. When you've got brackets, you multiply those indices, in this case minus 6. And this other style of question, 6 times 6 times 6, 3 of them would be 6 cubed. Pause now if you want to have a go at the questions. First question, when you are given a total amount, we are going to add, divide and multiply to solve the problem. So first of all, I will add the ratio. 3 add 2 makes 5. I'm going to split the £40 into 5 shares. 40 divided by 5 is 8, so each part is worth £8. And then I will multiply 3 times 8 because this person got 3, and 2 times 8, because this person got 2. My answers are 24 and 16. The second type of ratio question is where it doesn't give me the total, it tells me one person. I'm going to lay this one out a little bit differently. Anne and Bob are my two people, and their ratio is 4 to 3. It tells me in the question that Anne gets £12. I can see here that Anne's share has been multiplied by 3, I will do the same with Bob. I will multiply his by 3 as well, which gives me £9 for Bob. My answer is £9. The next question is a different type of ratio. It doesn't give me the total, as in the previous first example. It doesn't give me one person's, as in the previous example. It tells me the difference. It tells me that Alice and Lewis share some money in the ratio 5 to 3. And it tells me that Alice gets 16 more than Lewis. Now to write this down, I can see here on the ratio that Alice has got two parts more. But the question tells me that those two bits are worth the extra 16 sweets. So if two bits are worth 16, if I divide that by two, I know that one bit is worth eight on this, on this ratio question. So Alice, who got five shares, has got five times eight, which is 40, and Lewis, who got 3 shares, got 3 times 8, which is 24. 100 as a product of its prime factors, 100 is 10 times 10, 10 is 2 times 5, both are prime, and the other is also 2 times 5. My answer would be 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, or if it asks for it in index form, I could write 2 squared times 5 squared. 10 pens cost £3.20, so £3.20 divided by 10 would tell me that 1 pen is 32 pence. 8 pens cost £2.48, so dividing by 8 tells me that 1 pen in this pack is 31 pence. So the 8-pack is better value. Recipe. 30 grams of flour are needed in 6 buns. So if I double that, I know that 60 grams of flour are required in 12 buns. 
If I halve the original amount, I would know that 15 grams of flour are required in three buns. By adding up the amount needed in 12 and the amount needed in three buns, I know that 75 grams are required for 15 buns. Pause now if you want to have a go at the questions. In standard form, my number between 1 and 10 is 7.3. I'm going to times that by 10 to the power. We'll see how many times the dot's moved. We've put the dot in here, and the dot used to be at the end. So that dot has moved 1, 2, 3, 4 times. When we're writing numbers back into ordinary numbers, the minus power up here tells me it's going to be a zero point number. So I write my numbers at the end of the line. My decimal has moved three times. One, two, three. I'll fill in the gaps. 0 0.00193. My error interval, 4.6. The number before is 4.5. And the number after is 4.7. So my error intervals are the ones that come in between here. That would be 4.55 and 4.65. Anything to the power 0 is always 1. 4 to the minus 2, well 4 squared is 16 and the minus always means put a 1 over it. The highest common factor of these numbers can be done using Venn diagrams or by listing them. I'll list on this example. The factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. The factors of 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8 and 4 multiplied by itself. The highest common factor is the biggest in both lists, that will be 4. The lowest common multiple can be done using Venn diagrams. On this video I'll just list them. The multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and so on. The multiples of 18 are 18, 36, 54. No need to carry on, though, because we've already got 36, which is the lowest in both lists. Question X is an exchange rate. The first thing we do with exchange rate is put on the loops. We multiply to go from pounds to dollars and we divide to go from dollars to pounds and we always use this number in our calculations. The first one requires me to turn 200 pounds into dollars. Pounds into dollars will be a multiply. OK, done on a calculator, the answer is $296. Part 2 requires me to turn $500 into pounds. So dollars into pounds on the loops is in divide. Again, I will do this on a calculator. Because it's money, I can round this answer to two decimal places, £337.84. These are the last set of questions. The first question, the word evaluate just means work out the answer. It requires you to type it in exactly in the same format that's on the question into your calculator. Be very careful that you don't get too much underneath the square root or you're not squaring the wrong part. If you've done it properly on your calculator you should get 30.56136337 to two significant figures 1, 2, if you imagine a line down here the 5 will round it up so my final answer to part 2 will be 31 The question on the right, compound interest, I'm going to use the shortcut method, which will be 4,000 as my original amount, 
times by 1.03 be my interest to the power 2 because it's for 2 years on my calculator £4,243.60 Second to last question, simplifying the ratio, 20 centimetres, 3 metres converts to 300 centimetres. I'm going to divide this by 20 to give me the 1, so I'll have to divide this by 20, which gives me 15. My answer is 1 to 15. And finally, a nice simple question that looks difficult, two people sharing some money. This is the total, it tells me what one person receives. So Anne gets £30, and Bob, therefore, gets £12, because 42 take away 30 gives me the 12. Just now I need to simplify that answer. Well, I can divide by 6 on both sides to give me 5 to 2. That's the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. Please check out the other ones. Good luck with your last minute revision.